invite Professor S. P. Ganguly. Professor S. P. Ganguly is the words can't describe his contribution to bring India and Latin America closer. I invite Professor Ganguly to say a few words. Very, very good evening, Excellencies, my colleagues on the dais. I've been asked to talk about Latin American and Indian uh, literature, cultural perspectives, literary perspectives, and not touch the political aspects, economic aspects, which uh, aspects which are reserved for other eminent personalities here. Uh, excellencies, uh, colleagues, friends, you know, the uh, there is a there is a paradox which has always bothered people like us who have been involved in Spanish and Latin American studies for a very very long time, <clears throat> and that paradox is that there has been there is and we have been observing a tremendous empathy between India and Latin America for a long time, for historical reasons. But at the same time, there exists a knowledge gap between the two spaces, a knowledge gap which is taking a lot of time to be filled due to various reasons, at least not to our, my satisfaction, not to our satisfaction, who have been involved with Latin American studies for a very, very long time. Within the ambit of Latin American studies, my own interest has been Indo-Hispanic, Indo-Latin American, Indo-Spanish reception studies, where I have tried to see, concentrate research on the impact of Latin American, Spanish, themes, authors in India, and vice versa. The Indian authors and Indian themes in Latin America historically, particularly during the 20th century. Now, <clears throat> the challenge is, of course, how to push this knowledge mutual knowledge of these societies into a very, very broad framework so that it becomes a kind of a, a, a popular, a kind of a generalized uh, domain of study, of talk, of conversation. Recently, I produced a book after about two years of very hard work, we produced a book on Cesar Vallejo, which, is, which contains material probably for the first time uh, about Cesar Vallejo, about his uh, certain aspects which have not been dealt with earlier in any place. Now, I'll just give you an instance. There is, there is a, a journalist in Peru who has seen this book and has written a review. This book has gone to Peru and he has written a review. And he's extremely surprised. He's a journalist, a well-known journalist of the uh, paper of the journal called El Comercial, which is fairly well read. And he says, que sorpresa que en un país, que en ese país de tigre y canela, in this country, in that country where you see tigers and cinnamon, you have a book on Cesar Vallejo. Now, this comment, obviously the whole review is a very good review of 
the person, the ambassador who, uh, who initiated this project, plus our work, etc., etc. But the very perception, very perception of this journalist from Latin America has, again, you know, it substantiates my own thinking that we still need to make these journalists understand and talk about an India which is modern. He is talking about an India from a very, very old perspective. He's so surprised that he doesn't know that India can produce a book on Cesar Vallejo. He's extremely delighted with the book. There is a very <coughs> good review of the book. But this very prejudice, this marks many of the perceptions that predominate in many institutions, in many places in Latin America about India. This is what is surprising. In spite of the fact that in the 20th century, in the beginning, Latin America has been the space where there has been, from Argentina and Mexico and Chile, there has been in, 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 a, in, a, in Costa Rica, in many journals, there has been a tremendous consciousness about the historical realities of India. Garcia Monge in El Repertorio Americano was writing in 1920 about the struggle that India was waging against the Britishers. He was talking about Gandhi, he was talking about Tagore. Now, from the very beginning, from 1913 onwards, Tagore is, I won't say household word, but it is so, so much discussed, so many, in so many spaces translated. He almost becomes a kind of a national presence in almost all these countries. Jose Vasconcelos in Mexico, as the secretary, as the minister of education, he integrates Tagorean texts in all the reading material for schools and colleges. <coughs> Octavio Paz, although he is not familiar with India, in his early 30s, even in the 20s, with his first wife, Elena Garro, he is discussing esoteric theosophic themes. He is discussing with his father-in-law things which will have tremendous repercussion in his future evolution when he comes to India. Throughout the 20th century, there are six or seven very important Chilean travelers who are coming to India, writing books on India. These, I'm presently working on these Chilean travelers who wrote, you know, five of them, starting from Augusto Dalmar, who in 1908 visited India. He was writing about Indian legends, performances in villages in a very, very positive fashion in Chilean magazines. Later, this was published in 1935 in a book called Nirvana. Now, there is, in Argentina, Victoria Ocampo, who entered into a very, very intimate relationship with Tagore. The kind of reception she has of the entire Indian presence Gandhi, Tagore, of course, first. She gets so moved by the Tagorean uh, poetry that her fir first reaction, she was passing through a very, very important phase in her life, a phase of crisis with her family, with her husband. And this is the first feel of great freedom that Tagore's poetry, Gitanjali, brings to her. And he becomes the eternal friend, lover, admirer. 
this relationship between Victoria Ocampo and Tagore becomes a legendary thing. Now, all this is taking place in the 20th century. There are so many authors who are translating Tagore throughout the 20th century. The journal Sur becomes the mouthpiece of the Indian presence, like El Repertorio Americano. Now, in spite of all this, now the challenge is how do we rescue that phase when Latin America, although it was in this whole domain, also what was Latin America was interested in the classical India, the Vedas, the Indian religion, etc., etc. Certainly it was, but it was interested in Gandhi, it was interested in his fight. Victoria Ocampo protest very vociferously against a, an article in La Nación, against a very well-known Argentine journalist who is actually trying to degrade Gandhi by saying that we don't require a man of alma, we require <clears throat> alma meaning soul, we require in India a man of armas. So it is the soul versus the arm, arms. So India has to fight its war against the Britishers with arms, not peacefully, not with the soul, not with that. Now, in all my studies about Latin America, I have found the tremendous presence of the humanity element, of humanism in all these writers. We're talking about, he talked about uh, uh, Neruda, Garcia Marquez, Vargas Llosa, Julio Cortázar, all these people and many more. I can't really give you a list here. There is a tremendous coincidence between the humanist philosophy of all these writers from, in, from the 20th century in Latin America and the Indian writers. So it is this humanist element which really brings us together. And therefore, it is our desire, it has been my effort to bring up, to write about, to translate all those authors Latin American authors, Spanish authors, who have defended the cause of humanism, who will understand perfectly, the Indians will perfectly understand that ethos. And in that, that context, I want to tell you that now, I want to just almost as uh, the first information to this August gathering, there is a uh, trust that has now been formed. It is called the Royal Bengal Trust. Royal Bengal Global Trust, which is starting a three to five year project of translating more than 1,000 Latin American books into Bengali and Hindi for an audience for you know an online reading material free of cost for all those who can read in Bengali and Hindi material that comes from Latin America. Now this is the project and I wish, I wish that someday some Latin American institution also comes forward with a similar project. And only thus, you know, this is the time of great crisis in the world. We are facing tremendous catastrophic situations in terms of differences, in terms of conflicts that are arising. And I, it is my firm belief that we need to evolve 
a kind of a cultural vocabulary a cultural vocabulary which would take from the traditions these two different traditions which have been neglected so far there is so much for us to take from the cultural vocabulary of latin america of the spanish speaking countries which would enrich our understanding of the world and similarly the cultural vocabulary of in latin america would get so much enriched with the kind of contribution that the knowledge of indian ethos regional literature can make which has so far not been done not by the international publishers who are only interested in the commerce in the lucro but this needs to be done because these are the two spaces india and latin america which have always defended the spirit of radical humanism i don't need i cannot go into the theoretical aspects of these radical humanist thought which is another area of study but certainly we need to look into that and initiate such projects like this global trust uh royal bengal global trust is initiating about which you will soon hear thank you very much our next speaker is professor vikash singh professor vikash singh teaches spanish at indira gandhi university so professor vikash singh thank you dr gupta uh for calling me inviting me here professor ganguly uh, in his beginning of uh, his intervention he talked about how to uh, you know uh, gap uh, bridge this knowledge gap that there is between india and latin america and uh, i feel being a language teacher uh, i feel that there comes the role of spanish language which could play an important role in bridging uh, this knowledge gap however however when you see uh, the overall foreign language education policy of government of india uh, i feel that uh, still foreign language teaching and learning is considered a marginal activity if you uh, see uh, the curriculum framework of uh, university grants commission in 2001 it published a model curriculum framework for foreign languages which was a revised report of 1990 so since 2001 we do not have any policy document from government of india which talks about the teaching and learning of spanish language in india at a later stage uh, in 2006 uh, we come across a report of knowledge commission there we see that there is a lot of emphasis is given on the teaching or introduction of english as a second language at primary and secondary level however far too little importance has been given on the teaching and learning of foreign language uh when we when we try to find out why there was no mention of foreign language education in the knowledge commission report uh we got in touch uh with the prime minister office uh through the right to information we try to find out uh was there any other uh discussion document related to foreign language teaching or not because uh, i was intrigued uh, last 6 months because there was a whole controversy of on you know german language uh because german was introduced in kendri vidyalayas as the second language so we try to find out uh, whether there is any policy document from the government of india whether they talk about foreign languages teaching in india or not though we could not find any information on uh, on that regard however in a written reply uh, of the rti application we received a document uh, submitted by uh, the chairman of the knowledge commission in 2006 to the pmo where he talks about uh, the need uh, to have 5 lakhs foreign language translators in india i don't know how he come uh, he has come to that uh, number Uh, whether there was any uh, structured uh, data uh, was collected or not i am not sure 
However, when we go back to the, the curriculum framework of 2001, we, we feel that uh, there is a need to revisit the overall curriculum framework because it, uh, the curriculum uh, lacks both in terms of uh, the objective and its content. Uh, when we see in terms of the textbook, uh, most of the textbooks of Spanish that we use in the Indian classroom, they are not context sensitive. Uh, and the proposed curriculum is largely uh, language centered and not learner centered or learning centered. So uh, we felt that uh, when we uh, did this study, we felt that there was a uh, need for a well deliberated national foreign language policy to be uh, introduced in India. However, another question that uh, intrigued us was to find out why the Indian students were opting to learn Spanish and not other languages, uh, which was earlier the case, uh, they were choosing French or German. So since 2007, we started collecting data from uh, the universities, uh, the pioneer universities like Delhi universities and uh, JNU, where they have the BA and MA level programs. And since 2007, periodically, uh, every two to three years, we collect data uh, from the students. And we ask them a question through a questionnaire that why do you learn Spanish? Uh, we try to analyze their motivation, interests, and expectations. And we found that more than 70% of the students, there could be a margin of uh, plus minus 3%, more than 70% of the Indian learners who were opting to learn Spanish, they said that we, learn, we want to learn Spanish because we need uh, jobs in multinational companies. There were approximately 17% of them who said, well, we like learning languages and that's, wh that's why we have opted for uh, one of the languages. And only 9% of them, they said they had some interest in Spain or Latin America. Uh, I would have, as a, as a teacher of language and a person who has known Latin America through language, I've never been to uh, Latin America. However, whatever little I know about Latin America through the language and the literature, I would have loved that this percentage to be far more than the, the extrinsic motivation, which is the, the need to seek a job. But that is a reality. So the question was, is it that that Spanish language for Indian student could be a passport? When we analyzed the data from 2005 and 2015, uh, in terms of India's interest in Latin American and Caribbean region, we see that there is a positive uh, outlook in Latin America and uh, there is a strengthening of bilateral and multilateral ties in the field of commerce, politics, and international relations. If we see in, uh, in terms of uh, the trade between India and Latin American and the Caribbean countries, we, we see that India's trade with Latin American and the Caribbean has grown over 1,000% in the last decade. And in the same period, uh, the reasons share in India, total trade basket has more than doubled. So all this has uh, resulted into generation of uh, uh, lots of documents that need to be translated from one language to another. And in turn, there is a growing demand for a specialized foreign language translators and interpreters. When we tried to contact the, the industry, we found that uh, the total translation industry uh, worldwide is worth 150 crores, out of which total translation and interpretation in Spanish only is uh, done in India is approximately 20 crores and with a requirement of 3,000 translators and interpreters jobs per year in India. There was another study in 2015 uh, where it said that uh, interna done, by, done by international organization where it said that we need approximately 2 lakhs foreign language experts uh, in Indian offshoring industries, particularly in BPOs and KPOs. So all this has resulted in in new departments, opening of new departments, and there is an increasing demand of Spanish language courses in Indian universities. If you compare the data of Spanish uh, students enrolled in different universities, there has been an increase of threefold. But there is a sad reality. Except uh, universities like JNU, DU, and Jamia Amelia, where you have a full-fledged department of Spanish studies and Latin American studies, and full-fledged faculty members, rest of India, you have one permanent faculty or one visiting faculty managing the whole so. So we feel that there is a lack of uh, trained teachers, lack of context sensitive didactic materials and expertise in foreign language teaching. So to be able to build this knowledge gap, we need to have 
such forums like this where we have a better interaction between institutions and not only Spanish and Latin American studies in India, but Indian studies in Latin America. So this platform, sir, I feel is an, is an opportunity for us to think in those lines as well, to have greater academic and institutional collaboration. So thank you so much, sir.